Nick Rhodes and Simon LeBlanc, great to have you with us. Great to have an, a week named after us, thank hey, you. Well, it's, we've been fans of yours for a long time and our viewers are constantly writing in for videos done with both Duran Duran and they've been letting us know about Arcadia's progress before we even know about it, they, they read all about you. Tell us, how did Arcadia get its name, the band? Um, well, there's a little, little known um, phrase in Latin which goes, et in Arcadia ego which basically is nonsense because all it means is and in Arcadia I. But it had been on my mind for a couple of weeks or so and we were looking for a name for the, for the band. We were desperate in fact. It was the very last day that we had to choose the name for the band. Um, and we were looking at photographs and I just wrote this little slogan on the light box and then crossed out et in and ego and I was left with Arcadia and, and Nick and Roger saw and said hey that's a great name for the band so let's use it. Because at one time it's going to be the Le Bon Rhodes Taylor project, right? Yeah, oh, it was. But that sounded a bit too much like, like the bankers Emerson. or something. <laughs> I think it sounds like Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Well, insurance agents to the stars, oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, apart from the three of you, there are a lot of other musicians mm -hmm. uh, playing on both the Election Day single and also on the rest of the album. Uh, I've heard Grace Jones and Sting. How did you go about getting... Well, Grace Jones and Sting actually were two just um, appearances. They just decided they wanted to do it. We bumped into them a few days before mm -hmm. and said we were recording. They said, oh, come down and, you know, do something. So they did. That was more fun. But yeah, you don't book somebody like Grace <laughs> Jones. <laughs> no, really. Um, but uh, the other musicians on the album were people that we, Simon and I, specifically chose um, for how we felt we wanted the album to sound. Yeah. We started with an initial nucleus which included uh, Simon Roger and I, plus uh, bass player Mark Egan, who's from more of a jazz school, and uh, guitarist Masami Tachia, and percussionist David Van Tegum. Then from there, after, after we recorded the initial tracks, we sort of added people like Dave Gilmore, Carlos Alomar, and Andy Mackay. They Mackay and <laughs> started coming in, right? The, so look at the list of credits on the album. It's probably going to be... This long. Well, it's not that long. I mean, it's, I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't that long. I mean, on bass guitar, Mark Egan on guitar, <coughs> Sami Tuchia, Carlos Alomar, Dave Gilmore on percussion, David Van Tegum and Rafael Jesus on saxophone, Andy Mackay. <laughs> From Roxy Music. We got, right? yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was fabulous. I'll tell you about that in a minute. I'll just right. finish the list. We've got Gabrielle Bindi on, on, <laughs> on, on Gypsy Violin. And um, that's about it, apart from the tribe. We have this tribe in to play percussion. I don't think we used very much of it. Well, tomorrow we're talking about the tribe and also about Roxy Music, because I know they're a, a big influence on the two of you. I know you both were fans of Roxy mm -hmm. Music. But right now, let's go back to the first Duran Duran album and have you choose a video from it and why. OK, <laughs> OK, Richard, here we go. Um, on video one, because it's a great historical piece for us, and it always makes us laugh looking at it, I mean, just catch the hairdos. <laughs> this is Planet Earth. Here's your week here at Video One with us, Nick Rhodes and Simon LeBon, and when we left off yesterday, we were talking about Roxy Music and really unsung heroes here in the States. People don't realize the influence they exerted over a lot of musicians. Mm. Yeah, I think... Uh, it's funny that they never actually broke through in America. I mean, in England, they broke through in 1972 with a song called Virginia Plain and um, grew in popularity since then. They're still very popular now. Oh, Brian Ferry's solo career continues. But uh, in America, still nothing much, really, which is... Uh, it's quite strange. surprising, really, isn't it? Because they, because they did become so incredibly popular in, in Europe. I wonder if, they're, if they're, just, they're just a little bit a little bit gauche for the um, American palette. Yeah. I'll tell you what, let's check out a video from Roxy Music right now, Avalon. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back and talk with you some more today. Mm -hmm. Music, Avalon, a band that was very influential. What, what do you think the kids growing up now in America are listening to, apart from Duran Duran and Arcadia? What bands do you think can exert an influence over them? I don't know, it's very hard to say really. I mean, we don't spend all of our time here, but when we are here and we listen to the radio, um, Tend to mainly English music, um, things like. Kansas Station listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I I hear a lot of English music here. I mean, people like Wham, and um, Paul Young, um, and Frankie goes to Hollywood a little bit. Is starting to come through. Uh, 
I think collectively our, our favourite English yeah, band. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they made it with quite the splash they anticipated here, actually. Mm -hmm. They really wanted to do the business in the States and it didn't quite take off the way they wanted it. Talk about making a splash. Yeah. You've been making a splash sailing oh, life, really right? Good yeah, yeah. yeah, good segue. Now we're going to get into talking about sailing tomorrow, which I was yeah. told not to do in front of Nick, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. But let's check out a video of yours. Which... Oh, by the way, on, on this day we did talk a lot about... Um... About something? We did, didn't we? I've just... Sorry. Well, let's these things happen. <laughs> well, let's get into that sailing video. This is one that uh, really grabbed everyone's attention with you guys. Uh, was it in the Caribbean you shot Rio? Yeah. Would you like to introduce it on camera? Okay, here off the second album from Duran Duran called Rio, the title track, Rio. On video one with Nick Rhodes and Simon like Lebon. A, a lady in a sort of bathing costume walk, walking behind <laughs> to the holding up a plaque. Day three. <laughs> Well, it's, it's nice to give you a whole week because we get so much mail. I think you've done, with Duran around 15 videos, and uh, not to count the long form <coughs> videos, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, Election Day for Arcadia, which we'll show on Friday. Do you ever get tired of making videos? Um, no, I don't think so, really, because there's always something new to do with them. I think uh, at the moment we've got quite a new approach. I mean, uh, we'll talk about that later in the week with the Arcadia video, but... We intend to sort of move video into a slightly new direction, I think, again. You seem to invest a lot of your time in video. I saw the uh, long form for Arena, which is you guys live on stage. Mm -hmm. And as well as just the live concert, you're, you're giving the home viewer so much more. You're giving them, you know, behind the, well, not behind the scenes, but actually video staged effects. How long did that take to shoot? Well, I mean, the, the effects uh, actually do take a long time to set up. And um, we're not always around for the time they're being set up, but when they're actually being shot and we're involved with them, it actually happens quite quickly. Very, very intricate effects. Um, what, like sort of the Wild Boys effect? It, exactly, yeah. Well, that was really a question of staging more than, more than an effect. It was actual, it was the, um, it was the set building and the choreography that was actually happening within the set. And that's what took the time, was the rehearsal for those moves. I mean, things like the guys who crashed into the walls and came somersaulting out of the holes and all that kind of thing. That took a long time. So with the time you spend on your videos, the time you spend on recording, the time you spend writing, the time you spend touring, do you ever get time to go home? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you make time for things. I mean, we, we are very busy all the time, but I guess that's the way we like it because... If I have a day off, I mean, I don't know what to do with myself. Sometimes I'm sort of sitting there twiddling my fingers thinking, I, I'm going to write a song or I've got to think about something. I've got to write something down. Or, uh, um, I guess it's good to, to have all the different options as well because, you know, if we're not doing a video or we're not recording and we're touring or something else, and uh, there's a lot of variety, so we never get too bored with anything. Well, let's go on location with you now. I think this video was shot in Australia. And Nick was saying it's a favourite of his. Mm. And uh, it shows you going into a subterranean adventure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is Nick's favourite. Here you can introduce it. It is my favourite. The Union of the Snake. <laughs> <laughs> 